normally how I normally would start anything, you know, um, I first like to build out like roadmaps for my clients. So if you come to me and you're like, hey, you're an e-commerce brand um, and you want to you wanna play in South Africa, for example, the first thing I want to tell you is, first thing I want to do is I want to do research. Mm. So first things first, we do research to figure out who's your audience. Yeah. What are their pain points? What, how best should we communicate with these people? So what channel should we be in? Should we be communicating them with them by mobile? Is it TV? Mm. Is it radio? Where do these people where do these people predominantly sit? Yeah. Uh, so first things first, we do research. And then once we have an idea of who these people are, what their pain points are, and where they're sitting, then we go build a strategy. Hey. Hi. Hello. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. And yourself? I'm good. I'm very good. Wow. How is the, is the day? I know you had uh, so many things to do today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've had like a, a hectic week, in all honesty. Um, yeah, I've been running up and down today. I'm actually in Pretoria today. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. I'm, in, yeah I'm in Pretoria today. Um, we're actually working with one of our clients. They're doing um, a collaboration with Burner Boy. Ah, good Good one. Yeah, yeah. So they're doing like a. I don't know if you've seen the campaign, but he's doing something with uh, G Star Raw, the the denim brand. See, I'll tell I I will tell you something. I yeah. I I recently learned about uh, Bonaboy about uh, four years ago. <laughs> oh, ah. I'm old. Hey. See, my music. My music is. 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. Very, oh, okay. very few artists in the in the 21st century I know. Very ah, few. Okay. Very uh, few. Okay, I mean, no, worldwide. Me... See, my 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 the music I like is is rock. Mm. Ah. Okay. <laughs> so now in the 80s. In the late eighties, early nineties, I did a lot of rap, uh, okay. but it died down after after the second album of uh, Snoop Snoop Dogg. After that, okay. I left I left rap. You know, <laughs> okay. so see, I I don't I don't know all these new artists. My okay. daughters bring them to me. I say, oh, okay. okay. But I don't know anything about them. <laughs> uh, okay. But I'm sure they've told you, like you know, like Afrobeats. I'm a piano. Oh yeah, I know. I, 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 know, like I know it's. Sound. I know it's it's booming. It's yeah. booming everywhere. But yeah. I don't know. I don't know the the artists. And yeah, because okay. of of the things I do now, I hardly have the time to learn any about any artist. See, oh, okay. If I want to listen to music, I have my my I have my uh, iPod. Full of music I like. So I just go there. <laughs> and you know, to be honest, that doesn't sound bad at all. You know. Uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm old. I'm, no, I'm old. Yeah. I'm old. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I definitely know, like, uh, being stuck in your in your own world. Yeah. And especially consuming the things that you do love. Yeah, um, that's it. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm I'm the same. Like you know, I, I was born in the in the nineties, like early nineties. I was born in ninety two, so I'm thirty one now. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I remember re I recently went to like a nightclub, and uh, so I, I wear fitted pants. Like that's my thing. I wear fitted pants because I okay. grew up in the era where you wear fitted pants. Yeah. So uh, and uh, like uh, somebody was probably like nineteen or twenty came up to me and said, "No one does that anymore." <laughs> <laughs> Because, you know, I think that everything is loose again now. So yeah. everybody's wearing, like, everything that's, like, oversized and baggy. And yeah, like, baggy. Well, like, yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, well, I got caught up in the era where we wore fitted pants. <laughs> right? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. See, life I, is, uh, life is, uh, it's interesting. Uh, the errors come, errors go, you know. Exactly. Uh, trends start, trends end. Trends go. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, and if you yeah. find something you like, I think just stick to it. It makes life a lot easier. Yeah. So, so talking to you today, as 
someone in the promotion business okay yeah uh, so we, we, you'll be telling us telling us about the trends uh, in terms of advertising and, and all that so okay. you know what tell my audience who you are and what you do uh, so my name is Munilo Jili. Um, I'm the founder of an agency called The Local Agency. Um, we're a B2B uh, ad agency, um, and we specialize in helping brands localize their content. Mm -hmm. um, so, if you're, um, so if you're a brand that's playing outside the African space, or even if you are in the African space, and you want to better understand you, your, your audience, where your partner yeah. Um, will help you build out a roadmap to able to to be able to communicate with your audience about better figuring out like what channels you should be talking to them. Um, how do these people talk? Um, what makes them tick? What are their pain points? So we we help you build out a, a map and then we tell you exactly how to communicate to those people. Great, great. See now tell me, see, um um I like people, okay? So I like to yeah. know people. So t tell my audience a little bit about your, your background and how you got into advertising, doing this. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Maybe I'll go a bit into my background and then I'll, I'll, I'll tell you how I actually got into advertising and how I actually came up with the idea for the local agency. Very good. So, um, so I was born in Durban, uh, KwaZulu Natal. Um, in a small, small, like a, a relatively small suburb, um, called Woodlands. Um, I was raised by my by grandmother. I lost both my parents very young. Um, Ooh, sorry about that. Yeah, and um, because of that, uh, because I never wanted to disappoint my grandmother, I kind of like uh was a I'd say a really good student. Um, uh, so I was. I didn't really struggle too much in school. I think uh, doing school work kind of came natural in a way. Mm. Um, also, maybe it's also because maybe I think, uh, you know, when you grow up in a black household, they, they put like a, a huge emphasis on like education and stuff. Um, yeah. So I think because of that, uh, you know, I didn't struggle too much in school, but uh, and also not wanting to disappoint my grandmother, you know, after taking, because I've got a twin brother as well. So oh, okay. after take. Yeah, so after she took me and my, my twin brother in, you know, uh, the the last thing we wanted to do was maybe cause trouble. So Yeah. Yeah, we wanted just, you know, to be good kids. So that's a, a little bit about my, uh, you know, Your my situation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My upbringing. Um, and then, obviously, I studied, actually, I studied university. I studied business. Um, and then in my early 20s, I used to do a lot of, like, uh, promotions. So that's like going to like um going to like uh you know retail stores and handing out okay. brochures or pamphlets like anything to kind of like make extra cash because you know obviously growing up with your grandmother you know and she she was a nurse but she was taking care of me and my brother um so she didn't we didn't have too much growing up so obviously you know I'd look for the odd job either that or like bartendering whatever um. So I started off doing promotions, and uh, while I was doing promotions, uh, my first gosh, actually, I I went to a VW event. So if you know Volkswagen, yeah, um, mm -hmm. and uh, I was you know carrying boxes, uh, handing out pamphlets, telling people about the the Volkswagen because usually they train promoters like a day in advance, and uh, you have to tell them specs about the cars or whatever. And yeah. uh, it was like a campaign for about a week. And uh, my first boss, I'd actually met her there. Uh, you know, after about of a week of talking to me and stuff, she was like, yo, like, you know, you, you worked really hard over this first week. Uh, we have like a, a junior position in our company. And you seem like a smart guy. Like, do you want to, you know, do you want to come work wow. with us? Wow, good one. So, yeah. So they flew me out to, they flew me out to Cape Town. And um, I had my job interview. Uh, job interview went well, so I got the position as a as a as a junior project manager, and uh, yeah, and that's how my 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 foot got into, wow. into advertising. A good one, yeah, yeah. So that's how I got into advertising. Um, and uh, yeah, and then a decade later, that here I am. Um, and a bit about how actually I got the idea for the local agency. Mm. So 
we were actually working with um it was an e-hailing company that was trying to expand its footprints into the African markets. So they had recently expanded South Africa and they were hoping to go east. So they were okay. going to go into, uh, they were going to Tanzania, specifically Dar es Salaam. And that's where we were going to start. Um, and we'd come up with, um, so it was basically a 360 campaign, but we were going to start off with uh, like a on the on the ground kind of campaign. Uh, which is we were going to start like with a normal activation. So we we're going to get like promoters on the ground. They were going to hand out brochures. Yeah, mm -hmm. like you did for for BW. Yes, exactly that. So we we're going to hand out bro brochures and we like picked out like these high traffic zones mm. in, uh, in Dar es Salaam. So we had like a um, like taxi ranks, okay, uh, some malls and stuff. And we had like, we printed like 2,000 something of these flyers and we got these promoters. I think we had about a team of about 20 and we put them all over the city and um, they were supposed to hand out brochures. So uh, day one goes the campaign. We get these guys, they hand out these brochures and uh, the campaign doesn't go well. So we don't get a good, we don't get like good feedback. Mm. And um, I remember we called the guys in and we're like, hey, so... You you know, we gave you guys like a thousand brochures, but you know, you didn't even hand out half. And they were like, Well, look, you guys gave us these brochures, but they're in English. Even Ooh. though even though you know, in terms of uh legislation wise, the official language is English, but the people on the ground don't normally use English. They use English in courts, they might use English in in in, in the business world, but yeah, the everyday people that are catching taxis and the way they communicate, English is not their first language. Mm, it mm, should be in Swahili. Mm. Swahili, and, yeah. Swahili. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And and that's where the light kind of went off in my head. Uh, I was like, a lot of brands make the same mistake where, especially a lot of brands coming like the, the West or the East, uh, they want to play in the African space, but they don't know necessarily how to communicate directly with their audiences. Yeah. Um, They tend to come up with you know, they'll sit in an office in New York or, or St. Petersburg or whatever. Mm -hmm. They'll come up with an idea for a campaign and then they'll put the they'll throw the campaign under they'll throw the campaign into the market. Um, not understanding that Africa is very diverse and it's very nuanced. Yeah. The same campaign you use in Dar es Salaam is not necessarily going to translate in Cape Town or Johannesburg or Gaborone. The the campaign needs to speak to its own kind of like local audiences. Yeah. And uh, that's where the idea for the local agency came up. Very I like, good. Okay, I, I can be like the, the bridge between some of these brands and, uh, and, and the people on the ground. Yeah. Just helping them really understand who the people they're trying to talk to and how they need to be talking to them. Yeah. And understanding like small things like, hey, the people in this region actually don't have iPhones. They're all on Androids. So if you're gonna build an app, make sure it's it's Android friendly. Android, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, a bit about who I am. Wow, it's interesting. You see, the kind of work you do, you get to understand people. You know, yeah, you know? yeah, bit. yeah. yeah that, it's very important because uh, uh, if you don't understand people, then you can't promote anything to them. You know. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, for me, for me, I, I like people uh, working with young Africans. I've learned, yeah. I've understood better how diverse Africa is. Yeah. And, I, and I talk about it a lot. Most people do not understand how diverse it is. Yeah, you know, even like in Nigeria see, alone, there's over a hundred languages. Okay, okay. See, <laughs> yeah. we're we in Nigeria. We talk about over two hundred languages. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's and every every area with a different language, there's a different culture. Exactly. Okay? Yeah, what we see in the public domain is the is the uh, urban African Nigerian culture, mostly yeah. mostly Lagos urban culture. Yeah, okay. it's very different if you go to, if you go to Ibadan. Yeah, yeah. If it's, it's, it, it, I mean across the country there are differences, 
you know, even yeah. in the, in the urban spaces. So it's yeah. uh, Africa is just uh, a big a big market that is just being discovered. Yeah. By Africans. Okay. Exactly. Before 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 we talk about the foreigners. Okay. So yeah. 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 Tell me a little bit. Give 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 us a little overview of the kind of uh, your 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 work with your clients. How uh, how okay. do, how does it pan out? How does it start? How, how yeah? Just give us so normally how I normally would start anything. You know, um, I first like to build out like roadmaps for my clients. So if you come to me and you're like, hey, you're an e-commerce brand. Um, and you wanna you wanna play in South Africa, for example. The first thing I want to tell you is, first thing I want to do is I want to do research. Mm. So, first things first, we do research to figure out who's your audience. Yeah. What are their pain points? What? How best should we communicate with these people? So, what channels should we be in? Should we be communicating them with them by mobile? Is it TV? Mm. Is it radio? Where do these people? Where do these people predominantly sit? Yeah. Uh, so first things first, we do research. And then once we have an idea of who these people are, what their pain points are and where they're sitting, then we go build a strategy. We go into strategy and yeah. basically now we will then build out exactly what this content needs to look like. Mm. What does the content need to look like um, from the colors to the voiceovers? Um, to to our taglines, whatever it is, like how do we communicate with these people and what does this content look like? Um, so and once we built out a once we built out a strategy, we built out a content plan yeah. uh, of you know how much content are we going to be producing, um, and where and how many times are we going to you know put this content out? Yeah. Um, so that's pretty much like from you know, starting point to like, you know, the end point of what we do. You know, we first figure out who your people are, we build a strategy, and then we put to then we help you put together content to take yeah. it out into market. And then obviously there's there's further steps going up the line, you know, we got tracking the work, uh how's it performing, how's it not performing, what do we need to tweak, uh, tweak, how do we adapt it to be more effective. But yeah. yeah. Interesting. I see uh my first corporate job yeah was uh when i was in uni uni i think my second year in uni oh by uh, the way is that Nelson Mandela's book uh long walk to freedom there oh yeah the background? yeah that's it there. ah yeah. okay <laughs> yeah so then my my uncle was the uh, marketing manager of Nestle in Nigeria. Oh, okay. Yeah, he was. He was there. Uh, they were doing a lot of promotions. So when I went on holiday, I did some work with them. Okay. Uh, that's when I first heard about uh, marketing itself, and I learned about uh, branding and all this. And you know, oh, okay. so I, I'm ju I'm just saying that back then, that's boom, thirty yeah. years ago. Okay. Uh, yeah. Branding and marketing was mostly you hear about them uh, uh, about big companies and funny foreign companies. But today, today because of the internet and social media, uh, every small business person is talking about marketing, branding, and all that. You know. Yeah. So, definitely. So th th there's been a big evolution. You know. Mm -hmm. in the landscape landscape of marketing and branding so can can you t tell us take us through that evolution in africa yeah definitely i think uh information has been definitely de democratized over the last 30 years yeah uh and that's definitely because of the internet i think you know previously you would have to be a really big corporate that has a lot of resources to yeah. kind of get all this information uh, and what the internet's done is kind of like label the uh, the playing field in a way. Because now, even if you're a small to medium sized business, you can go on the internet um, and get research. You know, 
Yeah. Uh, it could be from the Harvard Business Review or Stanford or whatever, and you can go pull this research yourself to maybe better understand your your market that you're trying to enter, um, and maybe some of the um, some of the nuances that you know that plague that that market or industry that you're trying to you know play in. Um, and also, I definitely think what social media has also done. It's also given a lot of small businesses the opportunity to speak directly to their consumers. Yeah. Um, so you can now directly go, you know, you can be sitting at home, you can put out content and know exactly who the people you're talking to. Um, and you can also get feedback, you know, uh, live. Basically, me meaning you can put out a content about shoes that you might be selling mm -hmm. and you get right feedback from your consumers about your shoes and how they feel about it. And good or bad, this that information is vital because yeah. it can either you will either know I need to sell more of these shoes or I need to relook at my design or whatever. Um, and I think because of the internet and social media, it's definitely given a lot of more small businesses the the opportunity to not only scale and sell some of their products, but also be a lot more business savvy as well. Yeah. Um because uh, we are currently like in the information age. Uh, and I totally do feel like that's one of my things that I feel, you know, I always tell people, I think if what Africans really need is more infrastructure and more access to the web more than anything. Okay. I, I, I do agree, yes. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, you don't want to have, if you're in Nigeria, I won't, I won't even, I can't even tell you how many messages I get from people in Nigeria saying, hey, brother, I'm a, I'm a CEO, I'm a SEO specialist, or I'm a content manager, mm. or I'm a project manager. Uh, this is what I'm doing. Like, uh, let's collaborate. And I think that's what the, the internet's kind of done, right? Like, yeah. it's opened us up to, uh, to the world market. And I think if more people have access to the internet, uh, you don't have to rely on your own economy back home. You can make money yeah. outside the country. Exactly. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. De definitely. Yeah. So t tell me, who, who are your your agency's uh, ideal customers and uh, what uh, what benefits would they get from working with you? So my my ideal customer is uh, either uh, I target mostly startups. OK. Um, that, you know, they don't have a clear idea of who their customers are. Mm. So if you don't have like a clear understanding of who your customer is, then we're your partner. We're the we're, we're your go-to partner because we will help build you a map. Yeah. So you end up better understand your audience um, and you can then effectively communicate with them better uh, and tell you exactly where they sit, how you should be talking to these people. Um, so that's the the space we're in and we predominantly also target i'd say e-commerce and uh, software companies that are selling software okay um so if you're a software company or your e-commerce brand we're your partner especially if you're trying to play within the southern african market or even east africa yeah. um and you want to better understand this market and you've got a software or you've got an e you know you might be wanting to sell your shoes online, whatever mm, it is. Mm. We're we're your partner to help you better understand uh, the you know the southern African landscape or the yeah. East African landscape, so you can better communicate your product. Even if you're an African startup, um, and you just really just want to understand the the playing field that you're in. Yeah, yeah. So you work mostly with uh, e-commerce startup, e-commerce. Yeah. Well, okay. All right. Or, yeah. That's where we specialize. Yeah. But Very we good. don't limit it to that, but but that's where we specialize. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Now, uh, see, I, I mentioned branding. Okay. Uh, yeah. So tell us more about branding. What's, what's your advice for personal branding and business, business branding? You know, I, uh, I'm saying, I'm saying personal branding because uh, it seems, uh, uh, our image, our, our style, our whatever, it's now a, something that people want to consume. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I think even if you look at, if you look at any big brand in the world, mm. 
the founder is always always has a much larger following than the actual business yeah. in itself. Yeah. So you can look at Microsoft. Sorry, do, do you, I'm sure you know this young man. Calling young man, yes, you see young yeah. man. Uh, Busi. Busi Timbawayo. Yes. Yes. I Good. Busi. Now Busi is a brand. Yeah, definitely. E exactly. Definitely. That that's what I'm 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 trying to. You're alluding to. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Like if you look at any big brands, like the the founder of the of the companies usually has the larger following, and that's due to personal branding. Yeah. Um, I think personal branding is a really powerful tool to kind of define your. It's a it's a nice way to define your unique uh, value proposition uh, about who you are. And what you what you do and what you're about. Mm. Um, I think the most important thing when it comes to branding is 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 telling a story. Because at the end of the day, people don't buy products from companies; they buy products from people. Yeah. So it's super super important to to tell your story mm. and be authentic and try to be as transparent as possible. Yeah. Uh, so people can buy into you and who you are as an individual and what you're about. And I think you just need to be consistent across more, uh, yeah. across all platforms. You know, your YouTube, I mean, I'm sure you do YouTube as well. Yes. Uh, I'm sure you do YouTube and you're on Spotify and whatever. Yeah. And I think mm -hmm. the most important thing is just to be consistent. Be consistent and be authentic about who you are, what you do, uh, and what's your unique uh, value proposition. Um, and, and put the content out. And I think your people will gravitate towards you. Because I think the world is big enough, you know. There's a well, all brands there's a market to, to, to try. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So and I think if you're authentic, the the right people will find you. Mm -hmm. That that's true. That's true. I mean, we have a uh, six billion. Uh, I think it's nine powerful force. I well, think there's nine of us. I think there's about nine. No, it, 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 just, it, just, it just turned six, uh, eight. Eight. It just turned eight last year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Look at yeah. that. I, eight, yeah. Eight, eight last year. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's so, amazing. Uh, what are the big challenges in marketing in Africa? And uh, what are the possible solutions to them? Um, biggest challenges in Africa, I'd probably say because of how diverse Africa is. Mm. I think because of how diverse it is, it's it's really difficult sometimes for brands to play in this space because every market is very different and it needs a nuanced kind of approach. Yeah. Um, and I think that probably makes it the most trickiest thing. And I also think. Another challenge is infrastructure and okay. connectivity. Um, there's, you know, there's large parts of South Africa where, you know, they don't even have roads, um, no internet, no electricity. People are still using, um, you know, people are still, you know, getting water out of wells and stuff. Mm. And because of a lack of infrastructure, it makes it really difficult to communicate sometimes with some of those people. Yeah. Um, and in terms of solutions, I think um, for because it's diverse, the first the, my first point, I think we need to uh, have a, a localized approach when communicating with audiences. Okay. I think finding you know partners within those regions that can help you build up roadmaps to better communicate with those people will be really effective. So I think use a nuanced approach. Uh, to communicate directly with those people yeah. and make sure you're adapting and localizing your content as much as possible so you're communicating effectively with those people. Yeah. And then in terms of the infrastructure point, I think that probably boils down to, you know, voting the right people into power. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, so they can, you know, build out some of that infrastructure that we need. Mm. So we're better able to kind of get everybody, you know, on the on the same page. Mm, mm, mm. So tell me, okay, would you consider data as part of part of the inf infrastructure challenge? Yeah, definitely. I think data is extremely expensive. Well, I'm talking from from South African standpoint. It's 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 really, it's, really it's, it's a, I will tell you, South Africa might be one of the the 
Multi-country the country that have more, have more have more available data. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely, mm-hmm. like data is available, but it's just really, really expensive. And for people to be connected to the internet, it's also a big challenge here. Yeah. Um, most, most, most people in the township can't afford no, it. I'm, I'm, I'm even talking about data, see, as a marketer, I'll, yeah. I'll say for you to know, to understand the people, you need to have yeah. some data about them. Those people, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And that having, the, ha- having the, those kind of information is a little it's bit... It's also tricky. D- difficult yeah mm-hmm. yeah definitely yeah, definitely um that's that's a that's a real challenge to also really maybe understand some of those audiences and i think maybe it's also maybe really looking at how maybe you communicate with some of those people like i'll never forget so there was a um, uh, a guy in the actually uh it was a startup company it was called meet q um okay. it's like a dating app uh I, so I, I met with the founder like online. Uh, we had like a, a few Zoom calls, and he wanted to expand the the app and introduce it to South Africa uh, potentially. And I'll, I'll never forget we had a, a conversation, and uh, he had built the app for iOS for for Apple devices. And mm. I said, okay, well, look, one, if you wanna if you wanna reach a mass audience in Africa, one, we're gonna have to get it to be Android friendly. Yeah. And two, we need to make sure it's offline. It's an offline app as well. Meaning, it it mustn't consume data, so people can still use this thing offline. Yeah, and if they can still use it offline, then we'll be able to reach much more of an audience. You know, and then we can also then on the on the back end, what we can do is it's like capturing those people's details and their data, so we can tailor make our approach so we know exactly how to communicate with these people on 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 the app. Um, and that was some of the advice I kind of gave him because I think a lot of people. Have, they want to come play in this space, but there's so many people don't have access to data one. And also they use Androids because Androids are a lot more affordable. Apple Apple devices tend to be a lot more expensive. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So those are some of the things that you need to take in consideration if you want to play in this space. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me. See privacy issues. How 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 do companies privacy issues? Yes. You know, yeah. I mean, because that's here, a real problem. Yeah, you see, here that's it's a, a it's a big deal. Okay, uh, yeah. I can easily call a company that have my data and tell them delete it, yeah. and they, they they have to. I mean, yeah. I don't know how how does that work in South Africa, for example. Well, look, there are definitely. I think maybe South Africa does have like laws that protect uh, people's data and stuff. Yeah. Um, so uh, it's the same here as well as it, it is in the UK. Um, okay. There's a there's a data privacy law as well here. Okay. Where even in corporates, you know, corporates aren't allowed to share people's data, even yeah. you know within the workplace and and anytime you you log onto an app, they always say, hey, listen, like if you don't want to share your data, you don't have to share your data with us, and you okay. keep it private, and we can wipe it off for you. But I do know in some places in Africa, specifically in, uh, my, so my brother used to, so my brother, he, my twin brother, he worked yep. uh, with the Kenyan government. Um, okay. So I'll give you some context of what he does. So he's a cyber tech specialist. Okay. Um, and he specializes specific, specifically between the relationship between China and Africa. Mm. Um, and he helps governments write, write policies okay. specifically in the tech space. And, uh, He's spent over a year working with the, the Kenyan government to help them put together uh, policies to better protect their data because they were having issues with uh, some of the Chinese telecom companies mm. that are in Africa. And basically, you know, they're loaning them this technology, but they're also taking some of their data. Yep. Yep. So that's, that's, a, that's a big deal. <laughs> and that's a, yeah exactly right so yeah. they're taking some of this data um you know i don't want to say no no you don't, know, don't don't worry <laughs> about, about what time start, but yeah it's a, it's a big issue um, yeah. and he's been helping them write out policies and stuff in terms of like hey like these are the policies these are the rules and regulations yeah. for these kinds of things mm, mm. uh but I yeah mean, like it is a data it yeah is a because because of the of the global nature of the world today uh uh, those things need to be 
in place to yeah, protect definitely. everyone. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Definitely, definitely. So t- t- tell me, what what what's your your next move of your of your ad agency? What's the the next next stage for you guys? Uh, so you know, we still in phase one of my plan. Uh, so right now, I'm still. I'm still trying to build and grow and scale the brand, but um, I'm hoping we can have a bigger footprint in East Africa. Um, I have a, a bit of a, a network out there, um, and I'd like for us to expand and one day have an offices in, in East Africa. Okay. That's part of like my, my five-year plan. Uh, Good. To have us out there. Good. Um, and then what else do I have in store for us? Uh, um. We, I'm going to be starting a newsletter next week. Um, so I found somebody that's going to help me with some of the content writing. Um, okay. And we're going to be, we're going to be talking about. It's going to be called, uh, you know, it's just uh, an exclusive drop. It's going to be called the local local insights. Okay. So we're going to be talking about all things local and nuanced, specifically like. Uh, African, African, like local insights in terms of you know what's happening maybe in the tech space, what's happening in social media, and we're just going to be giving you know people that are interested in this kind of stuff like yeah uh, information on the landscape, like what's what's happening, um, and what to kind of expect. Good, good. Well, uh, I can't uh, tell you how exciting that sounds. this 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 sounds and and i think uh you guys you guys are doing a good job and uh, i I, w- I wish you all the best i wish you mm. all the best so Thank i I, 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 just, I like to talk to young people who who are doing something you know and yeah. uh, it's uh it's it, it's something something very important it, very yeah, important for, for africa you know yeah definitely yeah. and i think the most important thing you know i always uh i'll never forget i had a conversation with one of the She's the CEO of the largest angel investment fund in Africa. And, uh, you know, we we had breakfast. And, you know, the one thing that, you know, we both kind of alluded to are some of the biggest problems in Africa. And I think it's uh, a lack of exposure and representation yeah. more than anything. Mm. Exposure and representation and being able to see yourself um, is is super important in, in any kind of role. You know, I'll never forget that I always saw somebody... I'll never forget the first time I saw a black man driving a Rolls Royce in Johannesburg, you know, and at the time I was probably like 16 or 17 and, you know, maybe I'd seen one on like a, on a rap music video or whatever, yeah. but seeing another black guy driving a Rolls Royce in the middle of Johannesburg, like blew my mind. Yeah. I mean, you know? I mean see, I, I, ex- I like for us to be re- represented in every space. Yeah. But see, I, I I have my own idea about representation is this. We all are human beings. Yes. Okay. So if any any human being has done it, yeah. then I can do it. See, yeah. I don't I don't limit my representation to someone who looks like me. Yeah. Because that person looks like me on the outside, but his ideas and the way he thinks, are they thinking like me? Do they have mm. my idea? See? Yeah. yeah. And that's something we need to we need to look at. We uh, for me, mm-hmm. I don't I don't want to f- limit what yeah. I, I consider a representation yeah. for me to color. Color. No man, yeah. I totally understand that. Yeah. No, I totally, I totally understand that. I, I, but I, maybe... I, I, I understand what what you're saying. But see, yeah, definitely. It, it, but that it limits us. Okay. Uh, would I limit my representation, my representation to someone who speaks my language, who is for, for my tribe? You know, it's uh, it, yeah. it gets crazy. So yeah, you know. No, definitely. But I just think. I think there's something special about seeing somebody that looks like you do something. Yeah, of course. Then yeah, it becomes, of course. Mm-hmm. It becomes a lot more relatable, I guess, in a yeah, way. Yeah, like, I agree. It's a lot I like, agree. Oh, snap. Like, well, personally, for me, I think, like, seeing somebody that looks like me, it did a lot for me seeing a black guy, like, struggle. Yeah. Because, mm-hmm. like, you know, sometimes when 
so context as well. So you know, yeah. I grew up in a, I grew up in a in a predominantly like in very black neighborhood. Yeah, so I know. There was mm-hmm. there was there was like hardly any white people around, and you know because the way uh, apartheid was kind of structured, it was always like oh, white people have money, you mm-hmm. know. Mm-hmm. So in itself, the way you view yourself compared to them, you don't really compare yourself to them quite often. Yeah, because. Yeah you kind of, uh, in a way, kind of put them in a different box or a different category. Mm. You know, well, I, 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 get, I guess that happens in South Africa. For yeah. me, uh, Nigerians, uh, we don't have uh, any pop, a, any population of, of whites, okay? We're all yeah. black, okay? I grew up, my parents were teachers. Mm. We lived in Bariga, in Lagos. Hey, when I say Bariga, uh, So anybody that knows Bariga will say, okay, you, you, you say it's a ghetto. Well, it's my yeah. neighborhood. Okay. But yeah. one thing is this, being a child of teachers from day one, books, 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 books. Yeah. Okay. So see, I have formed a vision of human beings all kind of all kinds of colors yeah okay so see reading books it's a fantastic way to expand our horizon yeah and that's the next now I'm, i'm gonna ask you see i like reading books see in this room in this room i have at least at least uh, 300 books Oh, wow. At least 300, yeah. 300 books in, in I this can, room. I, I've, yeah, I've already seen a few. I think I've seen, I've read a few of those. I wrote Sapiens as well there. Okay, okay. I read, I read Sapiens. Oh, wow, Good. bad. Good, So I, I want you to do something for me. I, I, what I ask all my, all my guests to recommend five books for my audience. Okay, okay? Uh, so okay. do that for me. Okay, book one, uh, okay. Diary of a CEO by Stephen, Bar- uh, Stephen Bartlett. What was it called? Diary of a CEO. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Diary of a CEO. uh, Yeah. Fantastic read. I I I Um, I listen to his podcast very much. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Then you'll know exactly. Of course. Yeah. Amazing. Uh, I really enjoyed that book. I actually recently finished it. I think I finished it about maybe a week ago. Okay. Really good. Uh, Another book I'd highly recommend is Principles by Ray Dalio. Oh. Oh, I I bought that book for my first daughter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Really, really good read. Really enjoyed that. Um, another one is Limitless by Jim Quick. Hmm. How I, I haven't seen that? Okay. Okay. So basically, um, Jim Quick. I'll give you a short story about who he is, and then I'll tell you about his book. So basically, he grew up with like a, a learning disorder. Um, mm. and basically. They labeled him as a kid with a broken brain. Mm. Um, ah. And um, he then took it, he took it upon himself to kind of like teach himself how to learn. So, so the book is all about teaching yourself how to learn. And then he's got a lot of like uh, tips and tricks in the book to teach people how to learn and how to retain information. Oh, oh. the guy is Asian. Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, I, uh, see, I, I don't remember people's names. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, I've, list, I've, uh, I've even attended a couple of his webinars. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Cool. So Great. Jim Quick. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then Kim, uh, yeah. Jay, another yeah. one is uh, Barack Obama, uh, The okay. Promised Land. See? see uh, oh, you've got yeah. it? All his books are all there. Uh, okay, all his cool. books are, are there. Oh, I can actually see it. I can actually oh, see it. On, the, yeah. on that row, all his books are there. Oh, that's amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I really enjoy, I really actually enjoy Promised Land. Uh, okay. Especially because sometimes, like, I think, you know, people are really quick to kind of, like, uh, put blame, especially on uh, on former presidents about, you know, where things currently are. So it's kind of <laughs> nice to kind of, like, humanize the guy maybe also maybe understand you know some of the decisions he made and some of the challenges that he kind of went through so mm. i really enjoyed that mm. and then yeah the last i book, mean i i i love li- i love reading books 
of uh, leaders, okay, uh, and we can we we can learn a lot of things from yeah. the, the 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 decision making process. Is, yeah, is is difficult, okay, mm. because all the all the all the different things you need to consider. Yeah, I mean, so yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. And he actually has a really like, like even in the book, he he spoke about like. The one thing is when it's a really, really tough decision, yeah. you, you use this probability, which I thought was really nice, you know, weigh out all the options and if you can get to 51%, then you can make a decision, which I thought was really profound. Mm. Because, you know, sometimes you think you need something to be an absolute, but like usually that only happens with hindsight. So yeah. he uses probability to make his decisions, which I thought was really, was really cool. Um, mm. And then the last book is Robin Sharma, The Greatness Guide. Hmm. Hmm. What's it called again? Uh, the Greatness Guide, Robin Sharma. Really? Yeah. Basically, in the it's like a it's a, it's a traditional kind of like self help book where hmm. he talks about the the things that can make the things that make you great. Um, yeah. And he basically gives a lot of like insights and tips on how to become a, a high performer. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. from waking I, up I, 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 I have, a, I have one of, one of the, one of, the, I've read one of his books before, but I was just okay. trying to think if that you was the, the one. That, yeah, okay, mm -hmm. okay. okay, great, great. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Hey, you are a young African, okay, and you are doing something fantastic, yeah. okay. I want many, many young Africans to do something fantastic. In their own spaces, so yeah, I want you to advise fellow young Africans how they can do something to contribute to their communities. Um, I think we need to foster more of like entrepreneurial kind of like mindsets in Africa. Mm. Um, and I say this because I think if we can foster that then people would identify issues within their own communities okay. um, and explore different ways they can uh, solve some of those challenges, you know? Um, and I think we need to start on a micro level because if each community had people that had entrepreneurial mindsets, if maybe, for example, the, the community had issues with plumbing and you become a plumber, yep. that's a person addressing some of those issues. Maybe, you know, some of the homes in the neighborhood don't have a fencing in your community fencing. Cup and then there's a, yeah, then that's a person solving the fencing issue, um, you know, and, you know, I actually got into a big conversation with somebody one day and uh, I said, you know, if, if people focus on fixing issues on a micro level, instead of everybody trying to become a doctor or an engineer, mm. we would fix issues in those communities. Yeah. So. If, I agree. Sat, if all the if the young people sat together and said, okay, cool, in this community we've got issues around maybe plumbing, fencing, and I don't know, uh, maybe it's we need one doctor in the community. We have one doctor, we have one person that does plumbing, we have one person that does the landscaping. Um, and we approach it like that on a micro level, then we would fix some of the 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 larger issues. Yeah. And I think maybe that's how we need to kind of like address some of the the, some of the issues on a micro level instead of everybody trying to become a doctor and a lawyer and stuff and then what happens is, is that none of the issues back home actually get fixed because all the lawyers and the doctors are in town now in the city. <laughs> yeah <laughs> see I, I I totally agree with you and uh, yeah well but see I see something brewing okay in yeah. Africa that would derail your idea and my idea about okay. that we we all can contribute our own little little piece, okay? And then yeah. see this idea about li uh, our political leaders becoming going back to the same mistakes we made before, yeah, becoming Marxists. Mm. Okay. okay, it's it's I see it all the time, especially with 
African political leaders who say they are pan-Africanists. Mm -hmm. they, are, they are always talking about Marxism all the time. Mm -hmm. And yeah. see, I look at them I, and I ask myself, when have this idea ever worked anywhere in the world? Yeah. And they are still going back to it. See, because the ideas sound beautiful. Yeah. When people tell you how we can do it, do, do everything together, you know? Yeah. It doesn't work. Yeah. It's not the natural way we do things. Yes, we do things together as a family. Mm -hmm. Okay. But beyond the family, we don't do it. We don't. I I can't give my money to someone else outside mm -hmm. my family. Yeah. Okay. Yes, my cousin. I will still. I will grumble. Yeah, he's my cousin, so I'll give him some. Okay. <laughs> but someone yeah. outside my family, I say, who are you? Yeah. Okay. So see this idea that we need to do everything. In a com in in a communal way, yeah, will keep us where we are. Mm -hmm. We have been doing. We have, see, we have been trying to do it for decades, and it hasn't worked yet. We are still we are still trying to do it. Okay, mm -hmm. so uh, I agree with you. Yeah. Hey, but uh, I think you know the way I, the way I'm saying it is it's still from a, a capitalist standpoint. I think no, no. What I'm saying, you're, 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 what you're saying makes sense okay yeah. but i'm saying that what i see a lot of polit politicians promoting yeah would will, will, it's 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 not no. it will not work yeah and i know I, know, I, I definitely need to get where you're going with this but yeah definitely and i i mean ma marxism doesn't doesn't encourage entrepreneurship no it doesn't okay but okay it doesn't and you know. and we know that See, if you, you if you uh, uh, encourage pe young people to do something, they want to see the Fantastic fruits of their, of, of their labor. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Mm. You know? Yeah, I totally agree. I totally agree. Mm -hmm. So, uh, my last question. Yeah. What is your vision for Africa, for South Africa in the next 30 years time um i think the the, the future for africa is actually is very bright you know um six out of the 10 fastest growing economies are coming out of africa right now um and i was actually having a conversation with my friend recently you know he's planning on moving to um i think he's moving to belgium okay and uh you know and you know you can't stop people from you know moving migrating yeah mm -hmm. feel, you know where they feel like you know they've got more opportunities but you know i was trying to explain to him i was like hey listen like you know all the next big billionaires are going to come out of africa um and that's because of the um, the potential africa has you know you can yeah. become a billionaire from building a road out here yeah you know so uh you know i see a really bright future for south africa and africa in general i just think we need to we need to pump the money in the right places. That means investing in the right entrepreneurs. Um, and also the states uh, really giving and putting money in places where it's actually really needed. Mm. I, I think that's South Africa's biggest issue because, you know, South Africa, I don't think money is an issue. I think the money is just being ill spent more than anything. Yeah. The money should need to get channeled in the right areas. Where it's going to foster growth and, uh, you know, give young people opportunities. Because young people are hungry. And, and I think for the most point, part, young people want to work. So yeah. if we can, you know, create opportunities for them, then the, the future for Africa is very bright. Because I think we're the, we still have an untapped market. Yeah. Um, oh, very, very virgin market. Very, yeah. You yeah. know, mm -hmm. and, the sky's the limit, you know, and we still have the youngest population. So, you know, if you're, if you're, if you're a brand, 
um, and you've got a footprint in the West and you're looking to expand, you know, look no further than, you know, playing in the African market. There's, yeah. there's 2 billion people out here. Yeah. You know, yeah. And they're consumers too. So wow. that's my, that's my thoughts to the last question. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, your name again, Mulelo. Mulelo Chili. Yes. Good. See, yeah. I, 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 because I, I, I struggle pronouncing the name. The name. I've yeah. been trying to, not to call you by your name. <laughs> nah, it's, no, it's perfectly fine. See, uh, Mulelo, take, thank you very much for being a great guest of the Think Big for Africa podcast. And nah, I, thank you so much. Like I say, you guys are doing wonderful work, and I, I would. I would like to see you one day when I come to South Africa. You know? No, definitely, definitely. Like, you know, if I'm ever in London as well, I'll let you know. Good. You, you're based in London, right? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm based just out, outside of London. Uh, okay, uh, cool. uh, Watford. Okay, cool. I think I'm going to be in, uh, I think I'm going to be in Europe in the summer. Okay. Uh, probably going yeah. to be. If you, if you come to, if you come to uh, UK, ring me up. I'll let you know. Yeah. No, definitely, definitely. Yeah. All right. Take yeah, it. Take it. Thank Bye -bye. you so much for your yeah. time. I appreciate yeah. it. Bye. All right. Bye.